G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm looking at the Screamer from Foxtech FPV. This is a ready-to-fly package that came with the AT9, the Radiolink AT9 transmitter, which I've already done a bit of a review on. And But this is the quadcopter itself. Well, when I say quadcopter, well, it's not really a quadcopter because if we turn it around, you can see at the back, it's got another propeller. It's got another motor and another propeller. It's actually a pentacopter, I suppose you'd call it. And... Uh, really interesting concept it really i really love it when companies come out with innovative ideas now we've had a lot of ideas as to how to make quadcopters faster they've involved tilting the motors and all sorts of using round section arms and all sorts of things to try and get more speed out of these quadcopters by reducing the amount of drag because one of the problems we have with a quadcopter mini quad racing quad of any of any type is that if you look at it straight on it's pretty you know, there's not a lot of area there, but as you start putting in a bit of tilt on it, look at all that area that presents itself to the airstream. And that means that you, to go fast, you've got to angle it up more, which means more drag, which means you really don't get it. It's a law of diminishing returns. So how else can we make a mini quadcopter go fast, except push it from the back with a thrust motor? Now, this is a 26 what is it? A 2208 motor. So it's a pretty big damn motor. It's also a 2500 kV, so it's really as the name of the craft and, uh, sort of suggests, it is really going to scream. It's going to scream like hell. The thrust motors here, the, well, the lift motors, are 2205s with 2300 kV, and they have set up with clockwise and counterclockwise nuts. I'm not such a great fan of that because if you lose one of the wrong the sort of left-hand thread nuts, it can be a devil's own job to find a replacement, especially on a Sunday afternoon if you're trying to fly. No one's got one. It's a real pain, but hey, you know, that's the way they've made it. You're less likely to lose them because of the threads, but if you do, you can be in big trouble. So let's take a look at the front end here. See there's a camera in there. It's a small camera, quite a tiny camera. There's my finger for comparison. And I used to think these little cameras were crap, but I've actually been quite impressed with some of the smaller ones I've seen recently on things like the Taro 130. Um, they seem, that one seems to work pretty damn well for its size. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this one performs. What I don't like actually though is if you look at it, it's on the piss. That means it's tilted. If I was to fly this through FPV, I would probably end up with the whole thing banked like that just to get the camera level. So that's, that's not so good. The reason it's on the piss is because it is taped to the Mobius platform with some double-sided tape and for some reason it's more compressed on one side than the other. But that's another one of my dislikes as everyone knows is why put your flight camera on the Mobius platform? There's no sense to it. It's not going to stop it from producing jello because these are far too uh, stiff to do that. And all it means is that if you have a really bad crash and this gets ripped off, your, vi your video camera goes with it, it's probably going to rip the wires out the back and then you, you've got a repair job instead of just not having a repair job. So yeah, I, I wish manufacturers would just stick to mounting the video, the live video cameras to the frame. It's a much, much better idea, certainly in the case of a crash. Now, looking around, we've got some ESCs. I think these are 20 amp ESCs. I think they are the DYS. I'm not sure because I can't see, but I think we really, really cool being told they were DYS. I may be wrong. Uh, the Looking at the side, there's obviously carbon here. The arms are, they look like three mil carbon to me. Uh, maybe I should get my calipers and measure them. I will put the actual thickness here because I'll do it after I've made the video. Um, so yeah, so they're adequately strong, but not super strong. They're held in with, let me just go up a bit here so we can see what I'm talking about. Held in with two bolts, which means a lot of shear force on those bolts. I've got an MXP230, which has two bolts holding the arms on, and I've sheared off bolts. In this case, I think we would just rip the carbon apart. So if you're going to hit something with these arms, you may be in for new arms. Uh, they'll probably rip the bolt pit, rip the bolt holes out. So I would have liked to have seen four bolts for arms like that. It just makes it so much stronger. And if this really, really goes fast, then if you do hit something, there's going to be a lot of force involved. So you need a really strong frame. But I think what Foo's done here with this is try and keep it as light as possible. Which brings me to, of course, the weight. And here we have the scales that don't show the blood. Let's turn them on. Turn them on. Come on. On. There we go. Now I've got a graphene four cell 1300 battery on here, which is quite heavy. So I'll put it on with that first. And we get 646 grams. Let's take the battery off and see what we end up with because obviously they're a pretty heavy battery and the weight will depend on your battery. So let's do a dry weight. Let's just make sure we've got the zero correct. Oh, yep. Reset the zero. Ooh, come on. Here we go. Now, let's put it on without a battery. And we have a weight of 469, 470 grams. So that's, considering we've got an extra motor on there, that's not a bad weight. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's 
it's tried to keep, or the Fox Tech have tried to keep this pretty light weight. One of the more innovative features of this thing are the, are the rear canted arms. See how they have a, like a V tail set up here? That's quite interesting. And the reason for that, of course, is because if they didn't, then the props would collide. We'd have a collision between the lift props and the thrust prop, and that would cause problems. But they've just put a, a angle in there. Which brings me to these 3D printed motor mounts. Now these are actually really good 3D printing. It's really dense, really hard, really strong. Um, certainly no tendency for it to flake or any delamination between the, the layers. That's really, really good. And so they've got these motor mounts here. And also in here we've got these uh, rather strange looking pillars which have angles in them too because obviously this has to be done at an angle. There are two bolts holding the rear arms on as well as you can see. One thing I noticed that there seems to be quite a bit of strain. See in there the dimpling of the carbon. So this is, uh, the fit may not be quite as good as it could be. Underneath we've got four nuts with little silicon rubber covers on there. So that's part of your landing equipment. Although <laughs> um, obviously landing subjective because on the front we have the other motor mounts which are the front landing points here and again that's all nice and dandy now the, it came with the Dell 5x4 5 by 5 by 3 props which are great um, used those before I'll be doing some more prop reviews coming up pretty shortly actually also comes with the Dell circularly polarized 5.8 gigahertz antenna and big thumbs up because they've actually put arrows on there to show that it's circularly polarized in a clockwise direction uh, a lot of these things you have to break them apart to find out what's inside them because they don't tell you. Video transmitter on the side. It, I'm not sure what power it is, but look in the specs. There'll be a link to the product specs in the description of this video. So if you want to see the details, go there. The uh, thing I don't like about this is this is a long antenna. And as you can see, this is just double-sided taped to the side of the quad. And there's a bit of wiggle on there. The, the board moves a bit. More importantly, that means it's just this very, very thin heat shrink that's holding the video transmitter in place. And that quite often rips. When you use this double-sided tape to mount them, quite often if you have an impact, it'll rip all the plastic off and then this just floats around in the breeze. The other thing that worries me is, on this transmitter here, the SMA is only soldered in place. So if you come along and you hit a tree branch here, this is quite a stiff coax. So if you hit a tree branch, it's just going to get knocked right off. Or if you hit a gate, because probably you won't be flying so much proximity as racing through gates, hit a gate there, it's just going to take off, the SMA is going to buggy your video transmitter. Not, it's not very good. Uh, the XT60 comes out the side, oh, I don't know, to watch it doesn't rub against the carbon and fret there. Now it comes with two battery straps, a big one and a short one. This is the shorter of the two. It does a modest job, I suppose, of holding the battery in place. Didn't have this rubber here. Now this foam rubber is stuff that I've put in myself because otherwise the battery would be sitting straight on the carbon and this is really slippy. So the battery would slide backwards and forwards, and in a crash it's going to run straight forward into the Mobius platform, which has some really sharp bits of carbon that would slice into the battery and make it go up in smoke. So there's a lot of things here that could be improved. Um, it's, as I find, every quad I've reviewed, there's always a one or two or three or four or a dozen things that are, are close but not really you know, perfect. Um, so I'd like to see some improvements on this. Now, having said that, I credit to Fox Tech. This is an early one. This is probably one of the first off the production line because they wanted to get it to me to do a review on it. So in production, things may have changed a little. They may have addressed some of those issues. And another issue is this antenna. This is the Radio Link receiver antenna. It's just a single antenna. It doesn't have a diversity. Uh, but it's just sort of floating around in the breeze there. And it's just asking to be sucked into a prop and chopped into oblivion. So I have to work out some way of actually mounting this so it's not going to be in the way. Uh, and it's going to be clear of the propellers. Hmm. Has an F3 flight control of this one. I think they can also provide it with a NASE board if you want NASE board. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, what else have we got to talk about? Well, that's pretty much it really. I mean, what you see is what you get. The carbon frames are pretty thin. If we look at those, I'll find my calipers and we'll do some measuring. The arms are, as I thought, 3 mil, actually 3.2 millimeters, which is 1 eighth inch. And the top and bottom plates here are just one mil. That's pretty pretty thin. That's really thin. Um, I would like to have seen those a bit thicker, but as I say, they've built this for lightness, which means speed. So, you know, this, everything's a compromise in the world of racing and, you know, lightness versus speed. Which one do you take? They've obviously gone for the speed option here. So there we go. It's going to be interesting to fly now. As I say, it's got the F3 flight controller, and I think it's been set up with air mode, but I haven't had a chance to fly it yet. One thing I did like about this, uh, I did fire it up on the bench to make sure it worked, and big thumbs up for Fox Tech because the failsafe is set. Now, as we know, there was a version of the Walkera F210 where the failsafe didn't even work, let alone wasn't set. So it would have, I think some people lost them flying off into the distance when they flew out of range or whatever. This, of course, if you lose your transmitter signal, the motors just go back to the idle, 
that air mode has and it falls out of the sky. Brilliant. Well, it actually comes down flat because it's an air mode. Excellent. That's a great feature. Now, the other thing I noticed before I forget is that here's the radio link receiver in here. You can probably see the outline in there. It's around there like that. And it was just floating around inside, just, you know, rattling around. And it was actually coming forward and hitting the camera. If I get this into shot, it was coming forward and it was banging into the camera in there and pushing the camera down. Now, on this type of quad with the thrust motor, you don't actually need much in the way of up tilt on the camera, but you don't, still don't want down tilt. So the camera, the receiver was loose in there. I fixed that by putting a little bit of double-sided foam tape in the front there just to stop it moving backwards and forwards. And one thing I noticed when I was looking around in there is that they're using PPM output, or PWM I should say, output on the receiver. That is to say, each channel is being taken separately into the flight controller. And initially I thought, well, hang on, this is an S-Bus capable receiver. Why are they not using S-Bus? And then it dawned on me. This thrust motor at the back here has to be run from its own channel. So if you're running S-Bus, I don't know whether the radio link receivers still give you a PWM output on the other channels. It probably doesn't. A lot of receivers it doesn't. So if you want to use the channel outside of the flight controller, you've got to use PWM so you can just basically connect the ESC from this motor right through to your fifth or sixth channel or whatever you're using. And on the setup on the transmitter here, I was expecting perhaps that Foo would have put it on the slider, but these sliders are not very precise. You know, you tend to, because they're very stiff, you tend to overshoot and hard to control. Uh, so what he's done is he's put it on this three position switch, which is probably all you need. I mean, basically you've got the motor off, you've got half thrust and you've got full thrust. That's all you need. You're not really going to be modulating that thrust motor very hard or very often uh, because that's really just giving you your forward speed. If you want to maneuver, if you want to do anything else, you'll probably back it off to zero or half power or something. But when you really want to go fast, well, full throttle is all you need. I know people who fly fixed wing as if their throttle was on a stick. So what difference does that make? Now, as you see, this is set up in mode one because Foxtech were kind enough to send me a mode one because that's the way I fly. Most of you are probably thinking, why has he got a ratchet on his pitch control? Well, I don't because that's my throttle and my pitch is over here. Just like uh, Chad Nowak from Rotorite, uh, the, the winner of the first international drone or American drone racing championships. Yes, the real flyers have a ratchet on their pitch. There you go. So that's it. I will have to wait till the wind subsides. It's 45 kilometres an hour of wind outside at the moment, and it's also drizzling. So, oh man, winter is a terrible time of the year. I'll be taking this out, giving it a jolly good thrashing, and try. I'll be doing a full flight test review. And then I've got so many of these pretty fast quads lined up that I'm going to do some speed trials. We've got a 850 metre runway out here. I'm going to make some very bold markings on the runway, and I'm going to fly each of the quads between the two markings as fast as I can. It will be a measured distance, so we'll know what the speed is, and we'll get a pretty good comparison as to which is fastest. And that's what a lot of people want to know. Will this thrust motor on the Screamer really provide the extra thrust and performance and speed that I expect it to, or it would seem to? I don't know. We'll find out. Could be really interesting stuff. And if I stuff it up and crash into the runway, we'll really test out the strength of this frame. So there you go. If you've got questions, comments, anything you would like to know about this craft or anything you want to see in the flight review, then please put those questions, comments, whatever, in the place provided by YouTube below this video. If you're on a mobile device, whoa, that's terrible. You need to go and get a desktop so you can get access to the comments more easily. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.